Hi my friends, today is day seven of my goddess challenge. Whoa, I can't believe this is the end of the seven days. I cannot describe how much I actually enjoy creating these short videos for you. And I hope you find my videos useful, give you a little of hints, tips, advice, lessons, you name it, that can help you to improve your day, more productivity, energy, fun, and self-care that you manage to, you know, put into your, incorporate it into your life. So today it's going to be a short video as we are, you know, putting into a close. I want to make sure that these seven videos really consist of everything that I practice or everything that I think will be the first step to help you to really look at working or planning your social personal life in a way that is more um, aligned with your energy level aligned with what what you need um, in terms of your body and mind as well as what you really want to do in your life because to be honest when you are more focused and centered um, you often will know when something doesn't sit right with you or something that it's exactly what you need you feel like more on purpose and you know doing something that really make a difference and something more meaningful and sometimes it's that clarity we don't have and you feel like sort of blind going blind you know um following a job or a project or you know a a role that no longer serves you and it's through these type of practices that you know they may not seem like directly correlated but when you're eating better when you are mo having movement in your life, when the energy is flowing, when you check in, when you plan, when you really have those intimate and private conversation with yourself, I kid you not, if you are on the wrong track, if you have a song inside but you haven't sang it out, you know it, it will come out. So I think all these practices may, as I said so many times, they help you to get more energy and clarity. But underneath it all is to help you to emerge the more truer sense of self. So that's why actually this is all about becoming a goddess. What I call a goddess in a sense is that you become the best version of your feminine self, that you embrace your feminine wisdom, which partly it's about being very intuitive, nurturing towards yourself and others, as well as on purpose. Um, and this comes out when, oh, okay, so if you know what you want to do, what's your life calling, fantastic, you're in tune. But a lot of us may not be from at the beginning or sometimes we forget, we lost track or sometimes we evolve and we change. And we need to have this type of conversation with ourselves. We need to create this opportunity. So these kind of messages, so your inner self will come out will tell you what doesn't serve you or what you want to pursue more. You may actually really want to um, become a business owner or quit your day job or open a business or actually you just want to stay at home to be a full-time mom and really do something different than what other people expect you to do. So that could be a long way to go to achieve your dreams but the step one is to get clear about what you want and then next step will follow. So I actually hope these practices is not just good habits. It's actually much more than that. It's about knowing who you are, who you can become. And that's why I call them the goddess challenge because it's all about being the best feminine self that you can be. And goddess to me is an image about a woman who is empowered, who know and who honor the inner wisdom and cherish herself, look after herself inside and outside. And that's why everything I do, it's all about this concept. And I hope you kind of get it or it kind of comes out in a way and in itself that helps you and leads you to better understand your needs and also what will be good for you to do as a next step. It could be further your exercise or movement practice it could be like oh i really love it maybe i want to do 30 minutes a day or it's about planning or it's about you know starting to focus on how to look after yourself to avoid burnout or really setting having this kind of dialogue within yourself so when we come to a close today is not the end it's probably the beginning but i wanted to um introduce this practice which i learned the hard way that 
I didn't know how much I needed it until I actually did it. So after being a mom the second time, life was crazy, you know, young baby, business, work, you know, recovering from pregnancy, all that stuff. And also the sense of responsibility as a mom. And many of you can relate. Um, so I haven't been off duty for a long time. So the first time I went out with a couple of girlfriends just to, you know, be me, not with two kids and husband and just you know always thinking i don't know about you but for me when you go out with family it's not just about you get ready you have to make sure everybody have everything they need and we know make sure the place is suitable we know what is the exit plan if someone's sick or you know there's a lot of things to think about your pleasure or what you gonna do it's kind of like not very high on agenda make sure the kids have food and spare clothes and all that stuff now, you may not be a mom, so you may not have the same worries, but you may be working too hard with your your um, career or getting starting up a business or you have other family responsibility looking after other people. Everyone that I know as a, as a mom or as a, as a woman tend to forget to take time off for themselves. So I call this like a creative play or connection play or simply off duty rest time so i think once a month try yourself and once a month that you really can take an afternoon or a night from i mean the see thing is that you have to be flexible i won't say like date night doesn't work for me and my husband we have date lunch because <laughs> it's at this stage in our life date night is too hard day lunch is actually great so make it tailored to your needs and customize it but I, personally, you can call it the me time, which I think you either take an approach as, as a creative play, which is let your inner voice to come. It could be journaling. It could be go to watercoloring class or go for dance class, whatever that is. I think creative play is very important for most people. Um, if you are creative, you are a full-time writer, maybe you want to have a creative rest, which is not the creative at all. But most of us, maybe a creative play would be really useful. It's really like a me time, um, incorporate those elements. I mean, it doesn't have to be creative. You could just go for a bushwalk or for a massage, but like a me time. But I think the theme for me, it's always either a creative play um, or a connection day, which is meet, meeting up with friends or, you know, going somewhere, but be yourself. So when you connect with your friends without the family members, it's different. Um, it's not that we put on different faces, but we have different role. So I advise you to, you know, you could call up your girlfriends or, or work colleague, it doesn't matter, but just, you can just be you rather than the mom, the daughter, the cousin, whatever role that you play. The role you need to play is just you. So, or I say off duty rest, which is just do nothing that of, you know, looking after anyone. And once a month, I really want you to start doing this. Um, make a date on your schedule, on your calendar, whether digital or your planner. The thing is, if you just, oh, that concert sounds great, that's not gonna happen. You have to put it on your calendar. If it is about meeting people, set a date, pencil it in, making calls and maybe book a restaurant or book a cafe. I don't know, but you have to make it happen by putting the parameters around it. Just saying, this is a good idea. It's not going to fly. So the thing is when you put that out there, you really put yourself to practice this. What happened is that you would discover part of yourself that you were missing. So when we feel life seems to be empty or bland, or, you know, there seems to be stuck, a lot of times it's just you don't have enough me time or quiet time or this type of connection time, creative time to really address those needs. So it's actually just about having time out from responsibility. So I would say off duty time is probably the best description, but I wanted to start once a month and that's sort of like it's doable. And I wouldn't ask you to do it once a week because I know some of you are like, yeah, no way, you know, we don't want that. We want to try small. Everything I try to um, share with people is either very short and sweet, easy to do, easy to incorporate, easy to customize. You just sort of like a lower hanging fruit. Even with this, I'm just asking you once a month, you can do it. And 
the difference is that you start to have a different sense of self. Trust me. So just try once and see how you go, and you may tailor it to your needs. But having this creative play or off-duty rest is so super important for modern women like you and I. And so I really hope you will practice some of these things I shared in the last seven days and. I hope I will do this again with you soon, um, because I actually having a lot of fun doing this. It's kind of a bit of my creative play, so I hope you enjoy this. And if you want to get my planners, it's pretty easy. Just go to my shop. This is the link below. You can check it out. And um, and if any questions about my videos, about these tips, let me know. Or if it is about a planner, any question, let me know. Also, the sample play pages of my planner. If you want to check it out or print some out to test it, run, test run it. Sure thing. Come to come to my website, and you will see the link to get sample pages. Download for free. So I hope you enjoy my videos, and I would love to talk to you again soon. See you later. Have a great day.